And with any further ado, present Adrian Nader. So, um, it's actually a bit uh, tang tangential to wine because I'm going to talk about uh, both Mingui 64, which uh, wine works with, well, it works <coughs> both ways, and uh, a project of mine which uh, is windbills.org, um, which is which shows you make packages, binary packages for Windows. So you can build from uh, Linux, run on Windows. Uh, well, build on Windows 2, um, at, at some point, the other way around, if possible. So, yeah. Uh, first, uh, let's cover a sort of the talk, Mingui uh, 64, what it is, what it wants to do in the future, uh, an overview of WinBuilds, and then some more technical details, and uh, a few... Uh, uh, and some advice. Yeah, all right. <coughs> and so, um, Mingwix 64 was started uh, several years ago by a German company who had some program which required like uh, more than 2 gigabytes of memory, so uh, quite a lot more. And, um, well, because they had uh, huge images, so they did changes to Mingui, to .org, to GCC, to Binitils, to everything they required. And uh, the really nice thing they did is donate the code to Kai Tips. And uh, Kai then went on and upstreamed it. He did all the paperwork with the FSS, but maybe he had it before, I don't know. <coughs> and uh, he started working on GCC. He he continued working for several years, so I think it's been like at least six, seven years maybe. And um, most of it, have it, most of the changes have been upstream, but the changes to Mingu.org, there's been some politics involved, and um, Mingu.org saying no, we are already doing our 64 bit stuff, or we'll be doing it in the future. Uh, I won't get into the details, it's <coughs> always nice. And that gave uh, the Mingui City Folk project, uh, which is now hosted on SoulForge. Um, yeah. So, the, what's similar to Mingui.org is uh, headers, information comes from MSDN. Uh, that's a public source on, of information, no issue. But uh, one big philosophical difference is headers can, can also be built through reverse engineering. Mingulotalk does not want anything with that. They say they want to stay clear of any legal issue, so they stay with MSDN. Well, but MSDN isn't exhaustive, it's not even covered sometimes, and you, especially when you go in the lower layers, you're going to have issue with it. Um, so that's why uh, you can't reunite uh, headers, for example, of both projects. Well, not that easily. Uh, yeah, um, another big difference if you try to build something with Mingui.org, you're saying that well, usually you couldn't just take the FSL GCC, uh, everything else from uh, the website, you had to add some patches. And uh, Mingui 64, there's no patches required. It can happen, but usually you're fine with that, anything else. Uh, yeah. And uh, one thing I really enjoyed with Mingui 64 is that it's much more welcoming. And uh, that makes it nice to work with. Uh, yeah. And at least also, one goal is to reach the ABI of MSDC for C++, because right now you can't mix objects from the two. But uh, that's a goal, it's getting closer, and it's why every one or two GCC versions, you have to rebuild all your, GCC, your C++ stuff, because the ABI has changed, and Kai is the culprit here. 
but I don't think he's here to for you to throw stones at him. He was here, so I, uh, I that. Uh, he told me so. I haven't seen him yet. <laughs> Maybe. He probably she's probably hiding uh here he saw that. He's already gone. Oh crap. Oh yeah, she he left the four or Ah I see. Um so yeah. Uh, what in uh, what in the Mingus system for code? So uh, we have headers, of course, which uh, go up to Windows 8, I think now. Um, you get additional things quite regularly, unlike what Mingu.org, which Mingui.org, sorry, which was stuck. Uh, last time I looked, it had like five, six, seven years of lag. Um, that's why also several projects uh, collaborate, uh, do things together because uh, the Deotix headers come from Wine and uh, the DDK the ones come from React OS. Um, and also, so, so that for headers, there's also some code which uh, is mostly when um, the C1 time of Microsoft doesn't handle C99, C11, well, not all of it. And um, MIGUI 64 adds code to fill in the gaps. And the nice thing is uh, for LibM, actually, MIGUI 64's code is faster than uh, Microsoft's. Um, yeah. And if you want to build for, well, with MIGUI 64, uh, you have well, quite uh, several possibilities. You can cross compile from Linux. You can build from any of the POSIX like environments which run on Windows, so Cwin, uh, <coughs> NTS, or NTS2, which, uh, well, NTS is a fork from Cwin from like 10 or 15 years ago. NTS2 is a fork from Cwin, which does pretty much the same, which has pretty much the same difference. But uh, the code uh, from Cigwin is only uh, from last year. Um, and then there's Uwin, which uh, is made by DevCorn. And uh, I know no one who uses it, maybe besides him. And I'm really curious to know how it performs and when it should be used instead of Cigwin, for instance. But I have no info on that. Yeah. Yeah, from what I know, they have licensing differences. I think Uwin might be something. Uh, I said, yeah, I think when DLL is GPL, you will not, but uh, uh, I don't know if uh, you have differences in like performance or. Uh, okay, thanks. I asked well, Dave. Have uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, I asked Dave too, but haven't gotten an answer yet. And uh, well, last point, you can also do native compilation. Um, the only thing to know is that you will be without any shell, well, without any POSIX shell, so that's mostly when you run from an IDE. Um, one thing that uh, is actually, well, you have running many of these, uh, almost as many as uh, Linux distributions, uh, people who made binaries, um, well, act of two chains and possibly libraries and other binaries, other executable. So OpenSUSE and Fedora, they have teams which handle uh, that. Uh, they've been using Mingui64 for quite some time, and if you're running on one of these distributions, just go with them. There are like uh, at least 2,000 packages, uh, probably more. Uh, it's fairly exhaustive, well tested, and um, I think in, in both cases, you have uh, either Novel or Red Hat, which um, at least use the packages. So you know there's really users with, who care about uh, quality. Um, MXA is it based on source, and they have quite a lot of packages, but uh, sometimes a bit weird with well some with uh, some weird pictures and um, they do static linking of LGPL libraries which means 
uh, you're going to have troubles with uh, well, you might have troubles with uh, license because you won't be able to easily swap the LGPL binary for another one. Okay, I'm going to make it shorter. Ruben VV, uh, he had some nice builds. Well, he does many builds, and he had some nice ones with uh, Klang, and he's been working on LLVM more recently. Um, Seguin, there's a cross compiler in it, which is from Jonathan Young, who is a core member of Mingui64. Um, but yeah, and Win Builds, which is mine, and which is obviously awesome. Alright. Um, Oh, are you sure there's yeah. no Debian or Ubuntu? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, there are Debian, there are actually, um, not Archie directly, but R R U R. Uh, <laughs> there are going to be um, several ones, but um, the big difference is that OpenCD and Fedora, Fedora, they have many libraries. They, if you want libvorbis, if you want a lib, I don't know what, they're going to ship it. Um, Debian, they have the compilers, they have the two chain, uh, they have a few other ones, but not that many. Yeah. Um, some of them have been building libraries more recently, but uh, it's still fairly small. Um, yeah. Alright, so another view of wind builds. Oh, yeah. The Go really, uh, the first goal was to, uh, I noticed that everyone was doing their own builds, especially a few years ago, uh, everyone would build GCC, would build libraries, uh, it took ages, um, it wasn't easy, and uh, it's really frustrating. So I thought, maybe with uh, a more systematic approach, I could make it less painful. Um, I also wanted to make it to have better free software on Windows. Um, if people spend less time building, they can spend more time coding. Um, that could give nice results. And also, the last goal is that um, if you can bring more up to date and faster, like with everything, um, to Windows. Then we can probably get companies which do private software, which do proprietary software, to use them instead of other proprietary components, and then they can be supported on uh, Linux either because they are going to uh, to switch to Linux or swine more easily. So yeah, uh, as first current status, you need new Linux to build. Uh, you can run it on uh, Linux 2, and if you, well, obviously it's cross compilation, so uh, you can run the compiler on Linux. For the binaries, uh, actually you can install everything on XP uh, to 2012. I've tested like uh, four versions of them. Um, the only thing is that XP is as its own issues uh, at, the, at the, the OS level, not mine, and um, I can't do anything to fix them or maybe work around them. So avoid it. Um, yeah, uh, I've been meaning to. Right now there are only 60 packages. It's not that much, but it actually covers quite a lot of things you might want to do. There won't be. I don't think there will be more than a thousand packages ever. Like, you don't need a, a package for mod probe or K-mod on Windows, it makes no sense. Um, so that really means we have less packages. <coughs> um, adding packages is actually quite easy, I'll get to that a bit later. Uh, but what took time was really to work on the archi architecture, to make it nice and usable everywhere, to make installers for Windows, and that was awful. <coughs> uh, but version 1.3 was released a few weeks ago, and it works. It should be easy to set up, even if some people seem to have issues with it, but I will see soon. 
and version 1.4, which uh, should have many more packages at least. I hope at least 20, well, 10 to 20 more in two or three months. Alright. Um, as for what's available in more details, you have C, C, with C11 and C11 support. Uh, there's Lua 2. I haven't tried Ada, Photon, Perl, or Ruby mostly because I need, some, I need, I need a project to build uh, um, against them and to use. Uh, I have no idea what people could want, uh, well, which is not to use Perl's own tests. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm a bit limited because uh, since I do cross compilation, uh, I like to. Test suits are a bit more difficult to run. And also, I, I don't know the Perl one, but uh, I know the GCC one on Windows, uh, I think it would take like uh, 24 hours to run on some very powerful hardware. It's, uh, <coughs> it's very difficult to run in practice. Um, yeah, and because you, you, you can't run several tasks at, at the same time, because otherwise uh, the output is going to be mixed. You won't see anything. That's on Windows, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so Objective-C, I had them, but same, I, uh, I build nothing which is Objective-C. I know someone who used the uh, next step stuff on Windows, and the compiler worked, but I haven't tried since then. Um, oh yeah, uh, if you care about uh, Java or Objective-C GC support, um, well, you better do something now because uh, I can't build uh, a GCC six, uh, GCG uh, 64 bit cannot be built. Uh, the copy for, of libgc, which is in GCC, is from 2007, so it doesn't have 64 bit support and uh, no one is taking care of it. So it's going to, honestly, it's probably going to die very soon. Uh, yeah, uh, I've also been working on an OCaml post compiler um, for Python. I think they still require MSVC to build or to. Well, at some point they don't handle Mingui, but they, they're working on it. So that should come. Uh, that should come by the end of the year, actually. Okay. Uh, so status again, uh, you can run GCK apps, uh, past that uh, only 2.x for now, and you, don't, you only have 32-bit support, GTK 2, 64-bit seem to simply not work. Uh, you have enlightenment stuff, um, several other libraries, and Qt is actually missing because uh, QH is the weird beast, and I haven't been able to well, I should try again with Qt5, but with 4 something it was not very, very nice. Alright, um, so small roadmap. As I said, more packages. I need, I seriously need to work on the test suit. Um, when I have to try something on, I need to reboot on. Windows, and even if I need to do something by hand with even as few as 60 packages, uh, it's going to take a good chunk of the day. Uh, when I want to make a release, uh, it's going to take the weekend. Uh, that's something which uh, I need to improve on. Well, if someone is interested in that, uh, yeah, uh, get in touch, and I see what I can do too in, on my side. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I don't mention, but I really want to get security fixes on Windows. Uh, well, of libraries on Windows uh, in an efficient manner. I'm not still sure how to do it efficiently. But to which people? Um, longer term, more packages, uh, and I'd like to have uh, to include the package manager inside installers directly. The idea is that you get the package manager, you append some payload, and well, 
maybe not at the end, but you insert some payload and uh, you get an exe which you can run, which you will install the package manager, possibly update older version of some packages. That's the plan. Uh, not yet done, and i be working on that with one enlightenment people. You know, E17, so maybe in 10 years. Um, yeah, uh, when on Windows, uh, I'd really like to get that. I don't know if it's going to be used much, but it's fun. And um, post compiler for Linux to Windows. Um, no, sorry, there was only one. To from Windows to Linux. Actually, no companies Linux which. Started. Yeah, actually, no companies which do that because they have been migrating the the product to Windows, but uh, people are still working on Windows. They've been used to Windows as an environment for years, or they have some uh, IT people who don't want to migrate away from Windows, uh, but they're like doing Linux ARM, and uh, they use it. Right. Um, if you want to start using it, uh, I heard the doc, the documentation is pretty much exhaustive. At least for users, uh, simple users, it should be good. If you want to package, uh, well, it's, you're supposed to do it from Linux, it's easier, but you can also do it from Windows if you like pain. Um, prefer 1.4 dev 1, which has some much nicer changes. But if you only want to run it on Windows, 1.3, which is the current version adver advertised on the website, uh, you should not have any issue with it. Well, I hope so. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, if you want to help on something, uh, testing is really, really needed. Um, especially testing on various versions of Windows. That's something I I can do, but it's really painful. Um, uh, for the previous release, I've been testing installers for, I think I spent one month uh, testing and fixing installers on from XP to 2012. Uh, that's something I really like to uh, share the pain with others. Um, uh, yeah, also if you have some code, please build it. Uh, I'll, I'll show you why uh, at the end of the talk. Uh, there are many, many small issues which take nothing to fix, uh, usually. Uh, currently, it seems that almost everything builds cleanly. Well, oh, mostly cleanly. Um, that's actually pretty nice. It wasn't the case like three, four, five years ago. Um, yeah, uh, that's one about linking to our websites. It's because uh, there are quite a lot of websites which, uh, when you have new projects or projects which change, uh, which change web uh, homepage, uh, links are not updated and you get really old results in uh, search engines. So, just a quick check. Uh, you don't have to, I'm not telling you to remove Mingri.org and to never mention it again, uh, just to add Mingri64 next to it, for instance. Ah, right. So, users. Uh, I've seen from 1,000 to 2,000 installations during January. Uh, from the one day stats I've collected for, for February, it might be doubled um, <laughs> for February. Uh, the only thing is that, well, I show you how you install on Windows. Quickly. So, yeah, so you just fire your website, you go there, download, it's hidden in the doc, so you are forced to read the doc. You save, it's a zip file, and then you simply extract it. Fine, simple. And then you have uh, well, several binaries which are going to be combined, and you have an install script for MCSOR Seguin if you want in it. You have uh, an install script for when you are outside of them, you want only Windows stuff. Uh, I mean, you are outside of any POSIX uh, layer. Um, that's why it's a batch file. Hey. 
And you have a script which uh, you use for MC source Seguin, which is going to uh, switch which environment you use. So 32 bit or 64 bit. Uh, because uh, I, this does not have multiple tool, uh, tool chains because of name clashes. And yeah, so you just want that, and uh, then it installs automatically. And see something. Uh, thing is that from downloading the zip file to, well, it's very fast because it was actually on a gigabit pipe. Um, from downloading the zip file to running the script, it seems like as many as 50% of people give up. I have no idea why. I mean, all right, it's a script, it's not very pretty, but come on, 50% of people. Maybe you should call it setup or batch or something. I should try that, yeah. Well, when I take it, I just run zip it and take this stuff from it. You need to run it. Uh, I actually. Ah, oh, yeah, that was just running a few things. But yeah, th that's why I actually put uh, the links inside the doc and. You're supposed to read it, but yeah, it's possible, and that's also why I want to put a GUI to to make it. Even though I, I'm not sure it's a good idea to support people who will never read any documentation. And there are people who will never use a GUI. <laughs> that too. Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to finish the video, so directly. Uh, for just running stuff, um, the thing is that if you look here in the background, you actually see many, many files. Uh, that's all the packages. Uh, that's what you get pretty much automatically. So it has a non very nice current window. But apart from that, there's almost nothing involved to use it. Uh, that's uh, elementary stuff. Um, there's been some people who have been doing nice job to make it well, it's not perfect, like it's trying to say things in uh, uh, home, like on Linux, but apart from that, uh, it's almost working. Alright, so yeah, that's it for this video. Um, yeah, now, I the stats come from Apache Logs. Uh, that I hadn't planned to have any stats at first, and I've only been able to guess that from various bits here and there. Uh, it seems three percent of people are running from Linux, and five from Segwin. Uh, that's really a guess for Segwin, but I think it should be. Fair. I'm fairly confident in it. Uh, almost no one gives, gives feedback, of course. I have no idea if for most people it works or if they don't like it. Uh, so, yeah, again, I really like feedback on that. Uh, I, I have had a few people who have been happy with it, though, so I'm fairly confident. Uh, yeah, Western version of Windows for most people and 64 bit for actually. It's it. Like, Almost everyone who visits from Windows, the, who visits the website from Windows, uses um, a 64-bit OS. Um, I was expecting some people, but not 90% or more. Uh, well, quite common people might run Windows on their browser, but then copy the zip to somewhere else. Uh, you're going to need an internet connection at least, but. Um, um, yeah, they could do that too. Um, I, I want to call some more stats that uh, I only, it's only guess from uh, Apache Logs. So I see that many user agents, oh, actually one which has been pretty interesting is wget, because uh, that's the one I ship in the installer. And I've seen like, at some point pop up, I think in January I've seen uh, 90,000 downloads from WGET, uh, something like that, uh, from WGET uh, on Windows, and uh, 5,000 uh, WGET for Linux. That's how I guess um, how many installations there are. Well, um, 
how they are balanced. And for the number of insertions, yeah, I just check uh, which files have been downloaded and how many times. <coughs> and yeah, as I said, I want to put more stats in it. Uh, I, I, I don't need much, I, just, I only need to know 32 bits, 64 bits, uh, Windows, Linux, something else, and which version. And yeah, uh, MCC Green or outside of any. Because yeah, I'm currently I'm really blind than that. Uh, oh yeah, right. So, a few te technical details. Um, yeah, uh, I've written a uh, package manager from scratch. Uh, it's a very simple one. It was only meant to work like that. You install, you tar XVF, you store the list. When you want to install, you remove the files which have been which are in the list. Right. You take care not to remove uh, files from the package, but that's it. Uh, not exactly, but it's fully 90% of the work. And uh, there's something, some weird things to handle siblings. Uh, no, I hate siblings and Windows. I hate junctions. I even hate hard links. Um, I had to go into React to S code to understand how to use junctions and Windows. Very happy about that. Took me like three days to do one junction. Um, and yeah, the package manager is actually OCaml code because, uh, well, I know OCaml, it wasn't a bad tool for the job, and it compiles to native code and it works. Uh, you have a nice app, well, you are, they have ported most functions. You can write the same code on Linux and Windows. You're not going to have to do if def uh, one or the other. Uh, I think I watched it on Linux, made it work on Linux. Switch to Windows to like, I don't know, five, six hours to get everything working. Um, yeah, these scripts, they are from Slackware. And um, actually, the reason is that I'm going to try to find that again? Uh, um, mm. uh, uh, that's, that's expected. Uh, it's only an empty list. Uh, no, so, yeah, uh, just uh, an example. That's for LibArchive or BSDTAR. Um, the only changes actually are to. Well, you can't see anything actually. Uh, anyway. uh, you change, you set um, a, a few paths, like you want to install in lib or lib64. Uh, you keep. I've kept all that. Changes like 10 lines, which are copy past. Uh, that's the same, that's uh, simply extracting sources, uh, getting to the term directory. Um, you do some safe, safe uh, um, uh, you sanitize permissions and you won't configure. <coughs> configure. Uh, things I've added, no crap, that variable is not defined as well, anyway. Um, you change host, you set it. And then you replace elf when looking for executables to strip with p. Yeah, cool. And um, instead of calling uh, slackers make pkg, which, tells, uh, which takes a folder and makes an archive out of it, you, can, you call make way pkg, which is my tool. Uh, same here, copy paste. Um, porting is really simple, it's uh, like uh, 30 seconds to 1 minute of work for porting the script itself. Yeah, okay. um, of course that only works when the source can be ported. Um, no, no. Anyway. And if your software has been packaged, you or something you are interested in, you can just grab the logs, check what is in it. Uh, you're going to you should see you should see everything, uh, configure options, 
so if you want one which is on the uh, shot, uh, if you see a warning which uh, looks dubious, say, uh, well, you can fix it too. And, uh, but the scary thing, uh, there, are less, there is one less package to build for 64 bits, and you have half, uh, you have 6,000 warnings for 32 bits, and 9,000 for 64. So that means that I think we're pretty lucky that uh, most of the software actually won. Uh, there are probably bugs everywhere. Um, for the difference, I don't know, maybe because you have different sizes for, for some types. I don't know. But. Uh, we have for 99% of those. <laughs> uh, yeah, quite a lot of uh, Actually, there's also X264 which adds a dash fpeak to every C file it builds and GCC is going to say, hey, that's useless for each and every file. Yeah. Uh, that's probably only uh, one or two hundred uh, warnings. Um, yeah, and uh, I cannot uh, subscribe to every bug tracker and start saying, hey, you need to fix the, that line with that with that thing. Uh, I like that people do it the other way around. Uh, I'd like to. Uh, it, that means uh, get the sources of wing builds and uh, look for that string. It will mean there is a small patch right after that. So you look for it. If you like libug, you see there's a patch to it, there's a change to it. Uh, read it and maybe apply it. Uh, if it's wrong, uh, let me know. Um, yeah. As for a few common issues, uh, they are in the build system. Uh, when there's no post compilation, I cannot uh, put that in the packages. Uh, I'm trying to have reproducible builds, but well, not fully reproducible builds. But at least something which is not just pure log that it works once. Um, and that means I'm doing it from Linux. Uh, everything is supposed to be cross compiled because on Windows you are unlikely to be able to keep the same environment uh, for more than a, than a few, I don't know, Windows changes. Uh, you're not going to have five years of support for your Windows distribution. But, but, yeah. um, also, if you see something which uses libpng-config or anything similar, uh, please convince the author to not use them anymore to use pkg-config. Because uh, the, other one, the other one does not handle cross-compilation. So, we have one on the system, it's in slash user slash bin, and it's going to say use the Linux one, it's going to fail. But uh, the last one I need to fix, I simply set libpng c flags equal, equal uh, and call png uh, pkg config. That's it. Uh, it's a bit annoying to have to do that uh, nowadays. Uh, there were a few missing the dot exe extensions, well, not many. Um, yeah, that's the kind of thing uh, which is very easy to fix. Uh, Libsoup was failing because it was using, using str, chr, it hadn't included string.h, and uh, it was said to fail on warnings. Well, it would have failed anyway, but uh, it was really a one line change which uh, applies to everything. Um, if that version of Libsoup had been tried on to build for Windows, it would, not, it would have been fixed uh, at once. Um, another issue, yeah, OpenSSL. Yeah, it's the last time. 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 Yeah, it's the We can flex a little bit. Uh, I think it's that. Yeah, it should be as well. Um, yeah, uh, OpenSSL does a lot of weird things, including having a sending from SSL to Gmail to the same one, but uppercase. I don't think anyone calls that main page, but anyway. Uh, last one, which 
many people do wrong is that uh, DLL files usually go to bindiv and not libdiv, so next to .exe files. All right, yeah. So, uh, question to on the website if you want to look for things. Well, open a box there. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. So you focus very much on getting all sorts of libraries compiled under it, but what I'm still interested in is the actual compiler and linker part solid. Or is there still stuff to be solved there? Um, yeah, it's definitely solid. It's working well. Uh, the main changes that are left are probably uh, things like um, C++ ABI, um, PDB support, uh, a few things like that. But otherwise, it works well. Yeah, so I tried to use around November last year, for example, and the linker has had an has an error handling strategy in the last form, which wasn't particularly because of the problems. I haven't had an issue with that. I reported on the address. Yeah, probably. Uh, and there are actually yeah, two reasons I use Slack web. So one, uh, I use a Slack web build script and versions. Uh, I like Slack web because it works. it's not too old and not too new either. So I'm, to, I'm going to like a bit in versions, but at the same time it should be fairly stable. And the, the one thing with Binutils, is that there are, you have two versions. You have the FSF one and one which is meant for Linux, which has uh, five uh, number strings. Well, uh, yeah. And that one you can't not use it for Windows. Sorry, so I'm trying to use uh, Linux host uh, Windows target, obviously. Yeah, but I meant uh, there are two binutils, and uh, the FSF one and the one used by most Linux distributions for their own purpose, I mean, for to target yeah. Linux. And at some point, I made the mistake of using it. Uh, that will not work because they have Linux specific patches which are not yet upstream. Uh, you can recognize them because they are not like uh, Binity's 1.2.3, but 1.2.3, uh, 0.5, uh, point something, and something. But this one you cannot. Uh, yeah. Is there an option to treat include files, uh, open them with case insensitive and cross compile it from Linux to Windows? No. I don't think so. I haven't seen that. So I file a feature request. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was trying to compile some Windows code and it included the include first to the wrong case and it failed. <laughs> um, well, um, possibly if you build with, um, while well, using NTFS 3G, 3G on uh, Linux, uh, you have a mount option which says. Sure. Uh, but this, this was on X4. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah so you, no, you no need to be bound to that one. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah? Um, when you run this Windows installer, uh, how much. Uh, it downloads a lot of libraries. How, how big is the whole bunch of it? The. Focus a bit. Uh, the libraries you will be downloading like uh, 50 to 60 megabytes because it's actually XA LZMA2 compression. Uh, it compresses nicely and I think it expands to 2050 something. Maybe a bit more, I need to check. Downloading is really small, but it can expand to uh, three times more uh, pretty easily. And 50 to 60 is for 32 bits, and you also get 50 to 60 for 64 bits, so twice. Yeah. 